that I spent 17 years getting to this point, and uh, $350,000 in debt and $4.19 an hour for the majority of it, I guess <laughs> qualifies you a little bit. Uh, so that's one thing. And, and two, um, and I don't, you know, I, I love telling these stories because to me it was phenomenal. I, we grew up well below the poverty line for the majority of my childhood. We didn't know. You know, we didn't know. I'm from West Virginia. So I might be related to some of you. <laughs> so we grew up below the poverty line, and we didn't know. We were having a good time, but looking back as an adult, you start to realize, I don't know, if, you know some of you know what I'm talking about, you start to realize, wow, yeah, we were borrowing money and borrowing food and eating things that probably weren't right. So okay, that qualifies me a little bit, and then, and then killed through a, a, a real wrench in the, in the, I guess, the car, the engine. You say, well, how about poverty? obesity, and malnutrition. Okay, well, we can all get where poverty and obesity, I mean, that's been something we've talked about for a long time, but malnutrition. So I, I, I'm going to somehow, in the next 17 and a half minutes, make this work. Uh, it is a paradox, which I'll tell you that my wife this morning said, oh, so you're going to talk about uh, poverty and obesity and poverty and malnutrition. I said, no, I'm going to talk about how the three go together. She's like, are you sure that's what you meant? <laughs> yeah, maybe it is. So we'll make the connection real quick. So long story short, I, I am a, a surgeon. I was a general surgeon for a long time. I still do a lot of breast cancer, colon cancer, stuff like that. But I found a passion in obesity. Uh, and some of the things that Ms. Weaver and Ms. Lynn touched on, it, it's amazing. You would not believe some of the things I've learned uh, after doing a couple of fellowships and a lot of research. Obesity has so many things associated with it. We, we all know this, right? It's been beaten into this. The AMA, American Medical Society, finally recognized it as a epidemic, a pandemic. Uh, that's a big deal. That was a big move to the medical society because finally it's some recognition, right? But not a lot of people. That's great, they're fantastic. They got a lot of to make anything you want to say. One to four, all right, and then over Then sedentariness. The world we deal with hypertension. Sometimes you're more likely to have a heart attack if your BMI is over 30. Do you know you're seven times more likely to get cancer? Crazy, right? It's a hormone-based thing. It's very interesting. Here's a cool map. I like maps. We all like maps. Here's poverty. All right? Check out where the dark blue states are. Match that up with 
percentage of people who are obese. It's a pretty good correlation, right? In fact, there's an even better one. This one's pretty good. Rich state, poor state, slow state, fast state. The overlap is the same. Okay, so it's kind of like, okay, yeah, we get it. We get it, Dr. Reddick, I get it. Poor states, poor people, poverty equals obesity. Sure, that's kind of easy to get. But we've all heard a lot of reasons, a lot of, you know, it's education, the money. I'm going to introduce you to a term. Many of you know it. I hope it'll steal you like this thunder. It's called food security or food insecurity, which is something I hope, but it's a PC term, okay? But I hope you guys pick that word up and use it because that's a big word and we're going to learn it in a second. This one I threw in there just because I love messing with people. This is a lot of fun. Look at women versus men. And then, of course, it breaks it down into white, African American, Mexican, Hispanic. If you look at women, the poorer you are as a group, the more obese you are. Interestingly enough, men are almost the opposite. The more money you got, the bigger you are. And I'm just throwing this in because it's going to mess with you a little bit. But you have to look at the data for what it is. You can't look at it and just say, oh yeah, the poorer you are, the more obese you are. It's not necessarily true, but I just threw that in to have fun. So what am I saying? It's complicated. What does that mean? Let's talk about money. This is my one little jab at government, just because I'm that guy. Three hundred billion dollars of government subsidies going to farmers, right? We love our farmers. We've heard a lot about this in the, in the Trump era, right? Let's, let's help the farmers out. It's great. Cheap sugars and fats, and let's make this. Let's do some corn. Come on, let's get some corn syrup and soy. That's fantastic. Except for read the second slide, and this is so true. Trust me. Every day I go through my cafeteria at my hospital, and I see it. 1,200 calories. No way. No way. I'll tell you a story. My wife and I pull into the parking lot with the kids. It's Smoothie King. Smoothie King. I said, what do you want? She said, I'll take a vanilla Slim and Trim. Cool. That sounds good, right? I said, what size do you want? I'll take the small. I said, okay, no problem. I'm going. Vanilla Slim and Trim. It's 420 calories, and that's a Slim and Trim. It's crazy, right? So I'm standing there, and I'm not that hungry, but boy, it's looking good, right? And so I say, wow, man, I think I want one. The guy goes, what do you want? I said, I don't know. I want, I'm going to go work out. I want some protein. Sure, no problem. We have this peanut butter power something something. Peanut butter. That's what I need, right? I want that. So he goes, what size? I said, you kidding? My wife's getting small. Give me the big one, man. This is no problem. So here comes this thing that, that you guys remember the 7-Eleven big gulps? <laughs> here comes this thing, and I said, wow. He goes, yeah, man, you better work out hard. He goes, why is that? He goes, 1,346 calories. Don't worry, I drank it in 20 minutes. No problem. Put McDonald's to shame, and that's the smoothie app. I was doing something good for myself, right? Not so much. A cookie and a bag of chips for a dog. Or you can eat some carrots. Same thing. But you get the concept, right? It's easy. It's cheap to eat calories. And we're going to talk about empty calories in just a second. I promise to keep moving. So here's the issue. Poverty, obesity, cool. I got the link. Obesity and malnutrition. It seems like a paradox, but it's not. Hey, my stomach hurts too. This is horrible, right? But this is, you search the internet and you're like, okay, let's get some, let's see if I can find some pictures for everybody to make this kind of more entertaining so I'm just not reading off the slide, right? This is how the majority of people look at obesity, especially in America. Here's another one. This is India. Did you know? Read the statistics. It's kind of interesting. Third largest population for obesity now. And it's even all oh, obese people. They're on the malnutrition van. It's kind of cute. But the reality, I know, right? This is Africa. This is not our problem. This is a world problem. We know that. But now, our McDonald's, our easy food process and just processed food and junk has reached everywhere. Everywhere. So this is one of the few slides you can actually find that says obesity and malnutrition in the same sentence. All right. This is kind of key. Overweight does not mean well-nourished. Empty calories, empty foods. You don't need uh, you know, a dietary degree, you don't need an MD to figure that out. But that's what's available, right? You can go to McDonald's and they have a dollar menu. You can feed the whole family. When I was growing up, it was Taco Bell, which 
meant there was a lot of gas passed later in the night <laughs> in my family. But it was easy. You could feed the whole family. Five bucks. Five bucks. Because it was like 49 cent taco lizard. No doubt. Remember that? It's the concept of the link between obesity and malnutrition. This is the big slide. I only have a few more to Memorize this one. This one talks about the concepts of empty food, empty calories. The issue again is education. But how can you educate masses of people when you're up against culture, you're up against government, you're up against big money? I always tell my patients, I say, do you know one of the things that are ruined, ruined packages? There's many mean packages. If I could do anything for my patients, I would give them a, a, food, a spoon and a fork. Because when you start putting things in a wrapper, you never put it down. It's so easy. McDonald's made billions when they put it in a wrapper. You never put it down. It's fantastic. It's a great concept. Let me tell you, I'd do it if I was them. But it ruins it. This is the term I want you to remember. Food security. It's PC and it's cute, but it actually means something. So when you go out and you say, oh, there's no excuse for this. There's no excuse for this. Say, oh, we can educate people. In this day and age of the internet and the this and the that and kids access this stuff. No, they should be educated. No. It's actually not just that. It's about, I like to look at the other term, food insecurity. They break it down into four things. Available. Is it available? Do people have access to it? I mean, we're, we're talking about food deserts. Which when I looked at that, I was hoping it was food deserts, but it wasn't. <laughs> food deserts. That is real. You saw the map just in Orlando, right? Let me give you a couple statistics that you may not know. This is Indian River County. Let's bring it home, right? Did you know that there are, in our county, a 24 to 27% obesity rate? Did you also know that that equals about 150,000 plus people? That does not include children. That doesn't, that's just adults. Did you know that we ranked two years ago, I'm not sure what the new statistics are, number one in the country, we're famous, for disparity. 32963 ranked number seven in the country for richest zip code. Did you know across the train tracks is one of the poorest? <coughs> number one in the country for disparity. I know we're not Orlando. We're Indian River. That's huge. I don't know if those statistics reach home. If they reach home for me, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So when you talk about nourish to flourish, right? These are cute slides. Obesity and malnutrition, big deal. There is a huge link. And it starts with food insecurity. The availability, sustainability. What do they say? Give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. Teach a man to fish. He'll eat for a lifetime. Education is, is just so important, and that's why I'm, I'm just one man. These groups, that first talk is phenomenal. That's where it's at. My last one is just a, a shtick on, I'll give you one other statistic because I love numbers. The shtick on how much do things really increase. Now, this is just from 85 to 2000. This isn't the news data. Do you know that 20%, 35%, 46% rise in how much it costs to buy junk? Fats, oils, sodas, sugar, sweet. 118% increase in fresh fruit and vegetables. That's insane. That's not even fair. Who drives those prices? It's insane. So simple steps. Simple, just simple. It's so simple to fix this problem, right? No, it's not. But there are things you can do. Remember the food stamp programs? Now it's known as the supplemental SNAPs, supplemental nutrition assistance programs. Taxing sugars, good luck with that. Remember last year when they actually came out and said, yeah, we kind of lied to you. The sugar companies kind of gave us some money and we kept our mouth shut about how it causes diabetes and really hoses you for a lifetime. Remember that? Yeah, I remember when I was going through my fellowship and weight loss surgery, and I learned that the food pyramid was a lie. I 
grew up with that. That was on the back of the Raisin Bran box, man. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? No way! It was a lie. We've been lied to. We had a lot of fixing to do. So, last thing. Oh, 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 and I love that. If you guys have food, so cool. So if you want to start somewhere, start with the kids. Start with the kids because it is hard to change a culture and a mindset. I love it when you say you have a men's program, because we are hard-headed. <laughs> and we used to not cook a lot of men cook nowadays. Big difference and changes. You need to educate these kids. That's where you're going to make a change. Sure, it's 20 years away, but that's where it's at. And then there's your last one. It's real, it talks about, again, if you guys get your hands on this slide, this is a really wonderful way to make these changes. And again, I'd love to spend another hour and a half to tell you all about it, but it just talks about education money programs, education money programs, repeat, repeat, repeat. Anyway, thank you guys so much. Hopefully I didn't uh, go over my time too much, but thank you. Thank you.